Hi guys, welcome to the McCormick Sessions live webinar. This is Big Flavor Delivered and I'm Philly. I'm a development chef and you might have seen me on MasterChef The Professionals. So if you haven't watched that, you might have seen me there. Otherwise, I am here because I am an expert and a specialist in delivery food. We're gonna be going through six different recipes all about delivery and this is an absolutely live event. So if you have any questions, any burning questions, shout them in, all the guys are gonna be shouting questions at me. So make sure you get your questions in and everything is anonymous. So you can ask me anything, potentially. <laughs> We're gonna be going through a few different recipes and it's gonna be specifically for delivery. I've got the hottest trends on delivery for 2021 and I'm gonna be using two special products, which I absolutely love, well three, because I've got uh, two types of Franks and I've got French's mustard here as well. So I'm first of all gonna get started because we've only got an hour and uh, I don't want the guys to cut me off and we've got a lot to get through. So first of all, I need to bread some chicken. So I'm gonna grab that over here and I'm gonna grab the chicken as well. I've got a couple breaded already, but uh, yeah. I've got some chicken marinating and I'm going to be breading it in a pre-dust uh, breader and um, a marinade as well. So I feel like People are, we need to up our breading game. Like I've got here some, I've got some nachos, which I'm gonna be putting into the, into the breader. I'm just gonna crush these up. This is gonna give a beautiful texture and they fry up. They have the most amazing crust. It, it's just delicious. And I've got this, I've got these chicken strips that I've been marinating in a little bit of buttermilk. And I'm simply going to put them in a bit of pre-dust, so just so it, or everything really sticks to the chicken. Otherwise you can get like little pieces of batter falling off. And I'm gonna dip it into a marinade here and then into the breader. So the bread is a mixture of flour, corn flours, and it's got these nachos in, which are gonna stick to the, the breader really easily. And it's gonna stick to the chicken. So if you see this, come on guys, have a look see these little pieces of crisp these little pieces of nachos just adhering to the chicken so that is this is the ultimate fried chicken and i'm going to be frying them at 180 degrees for about five minutes so i'm just going to pop these in the fryer now I'll stick this here otherwise we're going to get a little bit of a mess and stick these directly into the fryer and just lay them gently in and they're going to come to a beautiful golden texture, color. <laughs> I'm gonna wash my hands, otherwise uh, I'm gonna get chicken everywhere, which is not so good. Excellent. Perfect, so while those are frying, I'm just gonna ping that over here for a bit. I'm gonna make a cheese sauce, but it's not just gonna be any cheese sauce. This is gonna be a really special cheese sauce. But we're gonna start off with a classic bechamel. So I have a bit of butter, flour, cheese, milk, the classic bechamel. So I'm just gonna heat up a pan, whack in about a tablespoon of butter and let that heat, let that melt. And then we're gonna put in the flour make the bechamel with the milk, and then we're gonna be using two types of cheese. I've got mozzarella for the stringiness, and then cheddar for that really cheesy flavor. So we'll let that melt, and have a little check on the chicken. It's gonna need a little bit longer, so that can just keep going inside. And turn this guy up. That's gonna melt nicely, and we can stick in a tablespoon of flour and you really want to cook out the flour because otherwise you get that um, grainy texture to the sauce and you really want that smooth sauce and I'm gonna just allow that to melt through and cook through perfect stick these over here <laughs> perfect have a little check on these I've actually fried some off because uh, yeah you don't want to Watch me fry 10,000 chicken, chicken tenders. Um, excellent. Okay, now that this is all melted, I can start adding in the milk. 
And you just want to go little bit by little bit until it gets a really nice, thick sauce. Show me a question. What, what have we got? What's the mo what is important to consider when, you're, when creating dishes for delivery? Right. There's a few important factors. You need to be thinking of how it's going to transport. It's really important what packaging you use. It needs to, like, if you're doing chicken, for example, it needs to stay crisp. So you need to have these, like, specific vents. I'd also say it, you need something that is going to hold itself together. So that's why burgers are actually perfect for delivery. Lots of people are doing really innovative packaging designs for delivery, especially. So you've got, like, little vents on the side, and that really alleviates any um, steam that's going into, into the container. Oh. Sauce is going. I'm going to add a little bit more milk and keep adding the milk until you get a really beautiful sauce here. And that's going to keep cooking. I've actually made one previously because uh, I'm sure you, you don't want me to watch me make a bechamel. I'm sure you've, uh, you know how to do that. You're all pros here. So I've made this bechamel and you can see by the goo of it how much cheese we're adding and that's the beauty of the mozzarella and the cheddar i mean it's so stringy and delicious so i'm going to be adding our french ears classic and we're going to be using quite a bit of this you want it like yellow you want that punch because french ears has got that um really intense mustard flavor so it's going to turn from that like white cheesy cheesy look to a bright yellow. I mean, that's what you want. You can just smell it already. It smells great. And we're going to pop up these. Perfect. So these tenders are now beautiful and golden. I'm just going to allow these to rest out on the side. There's always a you shouldn't serve chicken piping hot. You need, to, you need to allow it to rest, allow the meat to um, relax a little bit. Um, so as we do that, so we've got our cheese sauce done, we've got our tenders. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a really special tomato salsa. It's so good and it's so easy. Um, I've got some chopped tomatoes, which I've just, I've just diced. It's, it's very simple with some diced red onion. And I've got a bit of chili here, which is very finely diced as well. There's a simplicity into a, a really fresh tomato salsa. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. That's going to give it a bit of acidity, but the beauty of, I'm going to be using Frank's chili and lime. The beauty of using Frank's chili and lime is that it's got the acidity from the Frank's, but it's also got that really fresh lime uh, lime juice, and then it's also got the heat as well. So it's got everything you kind of need within a salsa. So I'm going to add that directly in. Give it a, a little zhuzh. And then a little bit of fresh lime juice as well. So we can cut that just for a bit of theatre. So. And squeeze that in. Perfect. Move that to the side, otherwise it's uh, going to go everywhere. Um, and a bit of fresh coriander, because, I mean, I really love fresh herbs in, in a salsa. I think, uh, yeah, you should be. So we're going to chop these out really lovely. Just a nice little chiffonade. And that's going to go through the salsa. And I might give it a bit of a taste, because um, it's really delicious. I was really surprised by, by this salsa and how good and how simple it is. I mean, look at that. That's so good. Can you make any elements in advance? Any elements of the tomato salsa? Yeah, 100%. Or everything. So any elements for the tomato salsa? I mean, I pre-chopped the, the onions and the tomatoes. This could actually sit. I'd give this about like two days life on this. So you could actually pre-make this. And then with the, with the chicken, you can pre-marinate that. You really want to bread the chicken and fry it uh, fresh. But, uh, and you can, you can pre-make the sauce as well. 
Uh, you could have that in the fridge ready to go, whack it in a pan, and you're good to go. Or you can even keep it on service and just, uh, yeah, have it hot in a little bain-marie. Okay, perfect. So we've got our cheese sauce, we've got our salsa, we've got our chicken tenders. I'm going to make some loaded strips for our first dish. Our first of our six dishes, um, I'm going to make some loaded strips. I'm going to grab our takeaway box because that's what we're... We're doing so. We're going to do two different dishes here. So I've got our loaded strips. I'm going to add. I mean, look at this crust. You can see the you can see the nachos in the crust, which are like beautiful. They're just sticking out like little uh, porcupine of glory. <laughs> um, I've got this beautiful cheese sauce. This is naughty, look at this. I'm gonna pour this onto, I mean, yum. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited to try this, because I get to eat it later. <laughs> uh, and then we're gonna to top it off with the salsa here. I'm gonna finish this with a few fresh herbs. So I've got some spring onions, just like, Curly, nice, uh, a few chives, and let's go with a few crispy onions just to make it a little bit cr extra crunchy. And that is some simple loaded chicken strips. Now you don't need to just use that. You can serve them simply, beautifully like that. That's delicious. You could also put them in a taco form. Maybe serve it with margarita, maybe not, th not at this time. Uh, if you're watching at four, then uh, maybe it's a margarita time. It's a Friday, go for it. <laughs> so I'm gonna lay out a few tacos here. Hopefully uh, we're good. And I'm gonna do exactly the same. So I'll put in a uh, chicken strip in each of these. Let's do that. And then load in this cheese sauce just over the top. Hopefully this box fits all three, otherwise, uh, yeah. <laughs> put that there. And put in the salsa. This is smelling, you can, you can smell the franks coming off this. It's like so fresh, it's very good. I'm enjoying the smells coming from here. I'm gonna put a few uh, spring onions here. And yeah, let's top it off. And then these can sit. Because we're putting them in a box, they're all gonna sit and stack together. So they're not gonna move around in the back of a, um, a delivery rider's uh, backpack. So yeah, that's really important with delivery food. So you can stack that up. I mean, I'm excited for this. <laughs> I hope you are. Right, so this is number two. We've already done two, and it's only been, how long has it been, guys? 13 minutes. 13 minutes, there we go, smashing it. <laughs> what, are the, what are the sachets at the front? Right, I'm pretty excited about these. These are, these are brand new on the market. So this is French's and Frank's in sachet form. So these are excellent to actually, like, you could just pop these in. If, you, if, if someone wanted an extra bit of sauce and a... You can put these into there and then they could sauce it themselves afterwards. So if they wanted a little bit more heat, a little bit more mustard, go for it. And that gives a bit of uh, customization to, for your customers. Right. We've done two. Let's, get, let's keep going. Uh, this is a trend. This is a new trend, which uh, I'm, like, I'm really excited about. Uh, they, I found about... I love sweet things. I've got a massive sweet tooth. I'm a bit like a, I've got a kiddie palate almost. And when I got told about this trend, I was just like, this is, this is fun. <laughs> we're gonna be using, I've taken off the top because we're gonna be using a lot of Franks. And I love Franks. And we're gonna be using honey. And it's the simplest thing, we're making hot honey. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio of honey and Franks. Approximately one to one. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm just going to bring that to the boil and um, 
I'm gonna thicken it with a bit of cornstarch. I mean, if you guys are working in food service, what my background was coming from a restaurant, restaurant kitchens to food service and learning about how the waste involved in actually boiling sauces and making sauces in a traditional way. So here we're putting in a bit of cornstarch with some water as a slurry, just because you don't want to, you don't want to over reduce anything because that's money going in the bin. It's going, it's evaporating into the air and you don't want to be doing that. So uh, we're thickening it with a bit of cornstarch so you get that pack of flavor, but like saving, saving your back pocket. So <laughs> yeah, all about that. So we'll just wait for that to come up to the boil. A little clean up here, and then we'll add that directly to it, and it's going to thicken up nicely. Any other questions, guys, have we got at the moment? We good? <laughs> I'll keep carrying on then. Excellent. Guys, if you have any questions for me, send them in. I'm answering any questions, so make sure you keep firing them in. Um, I've, I've got a lot of knowledge about food delivery, food service, uh, manufacture, as well as like anything restauranty as well, which is, uh, I've got a, a wide, broad experience. So yeah, it's quite fun. <laughs> um, I'm going to be making um, a simple maple mustard dressing now. So I have, I'm gonna be using two types of mustard. Obviously we're gonna be using French's because uh, we need that heat, we need that flavor. And it's a unique flavor that you only really get from French's. So, I'm going to be adding quite a bit of that in um, with whole grain mustard. So that's going to give a little different color and visual to uh, this dressing. So it's, it's actually a vegan dressing. So anything we know, vegan, vegan plant-based is huge trends at the moment. So I'm making this dressing completely plant-based and I'm going to be using a different plant-based uh, Substitute later, which, which I'll show you guys, um, which I'm really excited to show you. And it's gonna really, it'll be easy to add to your menu. But so I've just added the French's, the whole grain mustard, a tablespoon of maple, and a bit of white wine vinegar. We'll just add this in. Give it a bit of a stir. And then we'll just, because we've got two emulsifiers in, it, it's gonna come together, as you said, it's quite easily. We hope. <laughs> Um, otherwise it is live, anything could happen. And we're just going to uh, drizzle in, we're using uh, rapeseed oil, but you can use any oil you want. If you use olive oil, it might like impart a different flavor. So yeah, just whisk that all together. And the maple's gonna be a bit of sweetness and the mustard's got the heat and a bit of acidity from the white wine vinegar. So you can see that beautiful like yellow, bright yellow uh, color. Yes, we have a question. What are your, what do you see, it's behind the light. <laughs> what do you see the top food trends this year? Okay, there, there's a lot of food trends coming, coming on, which I get excited about. I need to, as a consultant, as a development chef, I have to research a lot of food trends. So I see there's going to be, there's a huge trend in spice. So it, I'm using a, an ingredient called gochujang later which is it's having a moment at the moment, so I'll be showing you that. I mean, again, ve veganism, plant-based stuff is going to be hugely prominent for 2021, as well as a lot of like sustainability. Uh, so is your produce like locally sourced or is it, um, yeah, where are you getting it from? Or like, is it seasonal? That sort of stuff. Like the British produce is having a thing as well. So like, yeah, all those sort of things. Hope that answers all your questions. <laughs> yeah. Right, look at that, it's bright yellow. Ah, it's because of French's. Thank you, French's. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stick this to the back. And I have some finely shredded cabbage and carrot, and I'm gonna be making a little slaw. But my hot honey is up to the boil first, so I'm going to do that first. I'm gonna slurry this water and cornstarch together. So just like give it a bit of a mix. It's a non-Newtonian fluid. I've been learning what that is. Um, it's corn flour and water. But this uh, hot honey is up to the boil. So I'll take another whisk. And what we're gonna do is just give it a bit of a mix. And it's quite thin at the moment. And that's why we wanna like 
thicken it up with a bit of cornstarch. So I'm just going to pour that straight in. And it might look a bit cloudy to start off with, but don't worry. Um, it, it looks cloudy and then it'll go clear again. So yeah, absolutely fine. I'm going to make up this uh, slaw quickly. So we'll add in this finely shredded cabbage. I've got like, I think this was the hispy cabbage, but you can use whatever cabbage you want. And a bit of shredded carrot as well. And I'm gonna add in a few fresh herbs just because uh, to keep it nice and fresh and light. So I've got a bit of parsley that's gonna go in. I'm gonna chop that up nice and finely. Uh, yeah, what are we going? How can restaurants best tackle food going soggy under sauces when out for delivery? So this is a really tricky question. And it's hard because, yeah, sauces are wet. You want to keep your food crispy and it, it's a problem. And you don't want to use too much packaging. So uh, packaging is a solution. <sighs> it's really difficult. Um, it depends, like for this, maybe you could serve the, the cheese sauce by itself and then you could have the customer Almost, I, I really love the idea of having some instructions for the customer to, to make it like almost cook, almost prepared. So there's a huge trend at the moment for delivery boxes. So could you almost send a little card and be a bit more personal to, as a brand to the customer? And like be memorable as well. Like you need, it's so hard on the delivery market to be memorable and get your customers coming back and back. So yeah. Hope that answers your question. Cool. Um, I'm going to mix the dressing with the slaw, just a bit. That's going to go in there. Pui fats. And I'm going to stick that there for now. Um, and we can give that a little mix. Mix a rooski. We've got these tiny little tweezers here. <laughs> and that's going to just dress our slaw really nicely. And you want to make sure every, all the veg is coated beautifully. And um, if you see, this honey is like, let's get a spoon. Managing to use all the spoons in the kitchen. <laughs> it's beautifully, you want that to be coating the back of the spoon. So that's what, that's what we're looking for there. And we'll add a little bit more dressing here, which I shoved over here. And we're going to be making the next, the next dish. Oh. The next dish is going to be a really special burger. But what we're going to be doing is using those chicken tenders again. So this is a really cool way to actually use one, one raw material, one ingredient for many different recipes. So we're using it for three different recipes here, which is like you could have one ingredient and then make many different ingredients for that. That's going to provide less wastage because like, that's hugely important when actually you're designing your menus. Right, this is, uh, this honey is ready to go. I mean, look at that. Excellent, all about that. Stick that over there. And you want to cool, let it cool just slightly. We're just going to let it cool slightly. And stick that over here as well. Um, no, I don't want that anymore. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm going to heat, I've got a couple of burger buns. And I'll just, where are they? Where'd they go? Here they are. And we'll make a little burger dressing. And I'm pre toasted these, but I'm just going to warm them through again. It's always a, a top tip with any bread products. You, you can always refresh them and uh, bring them back. Like, it's, it's, very, it's really remarkable what you can do with a bread product and a little bit of uh, heat. Um, I'm going to make a little burger sauce. But again, this is not going to be any burger sauce. This is going to be a spicy mustardy burger sauce. <laughs> so I've got ketchup and mustard, which is the classic base, and well, ketchup and mayo. So we've got ketchup and mayo, so I'm going to put in a couple of them and a couple of tablespoons of the mayo. Give that a bit of a mix. And then we're going to want to go in. I really want to taste the mustard here. So I want to go in with the mustard. Um, and then a bit of the Franks as well. Let's go with this one. I used the whole bottle to the other sauce. <laughs> We're, uh, so we'll give it a bit of a shake. The Franks OG. Yeah. We're loving that. So you can get that pl classic burger sauce 
color and it's got the it's got the heat from the franks a little bit of acidity as well and then it's got that really lovely mustard flavor coming through as well so we'll just bring these out now oh. i mean I, I think i'm cooking for the guys here so i'll do all of them yeah. <laughs> otherwise there may be some unhappy tummies um perfect so I've got some, so I'll put, I'll pop on the burger sauce here. And you want to go double. Don't hold back on that. Got more lids than, oh, put these here for now. We'll go one for now. Um, and we want to put on this mustard slaw. So we've got this French mustard, cabbage mustard slaw. So that's going to be instead of the lettuce. So it's like, yeah, all about that. You want to put on quite a bit. We like that. I mean, if it's falling out of the edges, I mean, adds a bit of theater. I like it. And I've got the hot honey here. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take the, tender so the tender's just been resting here still got a beautiful crunch it's, it's holding that crunch and I'm going to dip it directly into the honey and it's going to glaze in the hot honey I'm going to use three of those probably gonna hopefully not burn my fingers uh, yeah I mean look at that <laughs> you guys hungry yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool uh, I'm hungry, so, uh, yeah, I mean, look at that. That looks beautiful. Stop it. Oh. <laughs> um, so that's excellent. I'm going to top it off with a bit of these pickled shallots. So I pickled them in a little bit of beetroot, so they're bright purple. Look, yeah, you want to drain them off, otherwise it's going to be leaking everywhere. And um, this is the Michelin training. <laughs> We look uh, fancy. <laughs> and here you're going to want the burger box. So we've got a burger box over the other side. Let's um, take these away. Leave that for now. And grab the burger box. Ooh. <laughs> so we have this. I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I get excited by food. I mean, I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this is number three. Look at that. Smashed it. That is a hot honey glazed burger with chicken tenders and a must French's mustard slaw. Yum. Okay. Excellent. That can go over there. Right. We're going over to, we're going over to a plant-based world, I believe. Let's do it. Right. So I've got, I've got these mushroom tenders. This is a, basically it's a portobello mushroom that I've just sliced up. Super easy. And I've dredged it in the same uh, batter system as I did the chicken. So I'm not going to do it again. You've already seen it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's, it's the, the portobellos that have been put through the batter system. And these are going to go straight into the fryer. It's gonna, they're going to cook quite quickly, so you don't need to worry about that to st stuff. And they're just going to go straight in, put quite a few in. Um, and it's still got the nachos around there to keep really hold the crunch, give it a bit of extra um, added value as well, which I think is really important, just to differentiate yourself from your, from your competitors as well. This is something that you could really shout about. Um, Excellent, and as we do that, we're going to, I'm gonna spin around a little bit. I'm gonna pre-bread these chicken wings that I've got here. And we've got another question. Do any food items retain heat better than others? Yes, uh, food items do. For example, these chicken wings. These chicken wings, because they've got the bone in, are going to retain the heat loads better than, uh, yeah, than, Something that's a bit smaller, for example, like uh, a really small bite of chicken, it might be, uh, might lose its heat a bit, uh, a bit more quickly. Yeah, hope that helps. Excellent, <laughs> I'm getting thumbs up here, so that's good. 
Right, I have chick... These guys are sizzling. I've got chicken wings that uh, I've been marinating, a little bit of mus buttermilk again, and I'm gonna dredge them, well, put them in, into a little bit of water marinade here, and then they're gonna go into a little flour uh, breader system. So, these are just ready to go here. I'm gonna need a roll. Um, did I get a tray again, the chicken tray? And then that's gonna go straight back into the water and then back into, thank you very much, <laughs> and then straight back into the flour. And you might get a little bit messy, but it's chicken, it's fried chicken, that's okay. It's all about the mess, we like it. And you wanna pick up a little bit of these like little crispy nug nuggets on the end. Um, so yeah, it's all good. We've got, some, we've got some mushrooms frying. They're all having a good time. I'm gonna go quickly go through these and do those. And then we'll pull out the mushrooms. Um, yeah. It's, what I'm doing here is I'm putting it into the water and then back into the, into the flour, just to make sure you get a really, really nice coating. I mean, in South Korea, they, uh, they double deep fry, so to get that really, really uh, unctuous, like, crispy texture. I might just do two here for now. Um, give a bit of a wash. I mean, I spent, I spent a year traveling out in, uh, across Asia. So I, I took a one-way ticket to Japan and then uh, traveled for about a year in uh, various Michelin star restaurants I worked. It was uh, and ate the most delicious food. So I do have a passion for Asian flavors. So I'm gonna be showing you that all in a minute. Right, these mushrooms are looking golden and crispy. Might just do a couple more because I'm going to do two dishes with this, otherwise we're not going to be on target for our six dishes. <laughs> um, yeah, one more question. Anything, uh, anything particular you've noticed in terms of street food trends? Also, everything looks... Swipe it up. <laughs> Mega! <laughs> um, Thank you very much for that everything looks mega because I'm excited to eat this. Any street food trends? Um, I mean, there's a few bits just come up recently, which is all about the Levantine kitchen. Um, and it's all talking about like Persian food. So if you, if you check out uh, anything like Persian flavors, I'm actually doing on, uh, on my socials, I'm, I pick a, an ingredient each month just to highlight and be like, oh, this is amazing. Last month I did gochujang. This month I'm doing tahini just because I've seen a lot of people actually researching and looking at like different um, Levantine flavors, I guess. So yeah, give that a check out. That, that's a new trend for 2021. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so I've got this breaded, these breaded chicken wings and they're just gonna sit there for a little minute um, while we make. Okay, everyone's hurt. Let me... Come on. <laughs> Everyone's heard of cola chicken wings, right. We are gonna switch it up a bit. We're gonna put a twist on it, and my twist, a Philly twist, so we're going to do Korean cola chicken wings. And we're going to be using gochujang, which I just previously mentioned is one of my favorite ingredients if you don't have it on your menu. If you haven't tasted it, please go out and buy a pot because uh, I would literally bathe in the stuff. It's so good. <laughs> Um, and this recipe is super simple. We're going to be using gochujang, we're going to be using cola, and we're going to be using franks. I lost it. We're going to be using franks, a little bit of cornstarch as well, um, just to give it a bit of thickness as well. So I'm going to stick this up on high, and super simple. Every, all my recipes are simple. Quick, simple, big flavor. That's what, that's what I go with. Like, if it's, too, if it's too much of a faff, I'm like, nah, <laughs> can't be dealing with it. Um, so, tablespoon of goji chang. We're going, in, we're going in with a cup of cola. That, that is going to reduce down. That's actually going to provide the sweetness. So, your classic Korean barbecue sauce, it's got quite a lot of brown sugar or honey in, and you don't want to be... Um, well, we're not using that. We're using that uh, cola as a replacement. And I'm going to be finishing off 
with the cornstarch and the franks. So yeah, we'll just allow that to come together. I might put a little bit of a whisk on that, just to break it up slightly. Um, these can come out. And they're looking beautiful and golden. I'm gonna stick these chicken wings in because they're gonna take about 10 minutes to cook. And apparently we've only got 10 minutes left. <laughs> Unless they allow me to, uh, the guys allow me to go and carry on. Um, but, so I'm gonna stick those in and they're gonna take a little bit to cook. Um, so yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Question, question. Do you think the spice trend focus on heat level or different flavors you get from chili or the different flavors you get from chili? Um, no, so I feel like it's, a, it's with flavor and with spice, it's all about rounded flavor. It's not just about heat. I mean, you can go for your ghost peppers, you can go for your North Carolina Reapers, but I don't think that's having a moment as such. It's more your srirachas, your uh, bespoke hot sauces, that sort of thing. Your, yeah. That all of that sort of stuff is, it's really on trend, it's great. Um, yeah, that's what I think. Cool, excellent, hope that answers. Right, I've brought this, this guy's on a boil, it's on quite a high heat, and we're gonna allow the cola to reduce slightly just because uh, you want, want that intense flavor. Chicken wings are having a good time, and as we make all of that, we're going to be making two more dishes. So we're gonna do plant-based versions of these guys, yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna get my boxes back. Loving these boxes. Um, and we're gonna take our, we're gonna take our portobello dippers that we had from before, and I'm just gonna pop these into the box. Gonna stick a few of those in. They almost look like uh, fries. You could serve this with like a little pot of the Frenchie's hot sauce, uh, Frenchie's mustard um, cheese sauce, and you could like dip these straight in. I mean, should I do one? Should I eat one? Yeah? <laughs> Can I eat one? <laughs> I mean, yeah, look at that. It's quite hot. Mm. I mean, so good. I'm down for that. Mm. Yum. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the dippers as well as we have the tacos as well. So give that a bit of a mixer ski. And we can lay these out. Perfect. And I might just, uh, with this, I might just, uh, well, this one, this is what I wanted. So I've got the vegan uh, plant-based, well, vegan plant-based. I've got the maple mustard dressing that I had before. So we've got that and we're gonna be using that across, the, across these dishes. So I've got our mustard slaw, which is gonna go beautifully in here. We can stick those straight in. And I'm gonna load up the portobello dippers in there and they're gonna act as like our uh, mushrooms I feel they're so meaty in flavor you almost don't miss you you almost don't miss the 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 meat element element from that so we've got that and we're gonna load that up with a little bit more of this mustard dressing you could also use like a vegan mayo or anything you wanted really I'm just gonna finish that off with a bit of Spring, on, uh, spring onions, chives that I've chopped, and a few crispy shallots. Let's go with that. And then they can sit, let's, let's put those all together. You wanna make sure to toast your, um, your, your tortillas. I think that's really important. I might add a few, a few little pickled chilies to add a bit of heat to that as well. 
And again, you can serve these with the sachets. So it could always be an add-on to your delivery customer. So then they can, they can have that option at the end. I'm going to move these around. Otherwise, they're going to be spitting at me. Yeah? Was there a question? <laughs> Any questions? Would you like... Would you, you, would any other veg work instead of mushrooms? Yes, 100%. Um, you could do cauliflower. Cauliflower wings is a classic. They work extremely well. Um, and they're, they're easy for customers to understand because you can say, yes, it's a cauliflower wing. So that they may get past that barrier almost. I'm going to make these, these up quickly as well before we finish. These are looking great. I feel like I'm on time, which is excellent. I hope you guys are enjoying this because I'm, I'm really hungry and I'm really excited to see everything here. So I'm going to load this up. Yum. I might just put loads of herbs, a few crispy onions, and let's go pickle chilies as well. So it's, it's the same. But uh, it's the loaded variety. Here we go. This, uh, this pass is getting, uh, it's getting full with uh, dishes, which is excellent. OK. Right, so I've got, I've got my cola. I've got my, I've got my cola and my gochujang here. And it's starting to smell really sweet, spicy, vibrant. I'm just going to thicken it up with a tablespoon of cornstarch and a little bit of water, like we did the last one. Give that a bit of a mix. Ooh. And I'm going to add that straight. Shh. I'm trying to speak. <laughs> Let's probe these. It's always important to probe your chicken, because uh, especially with like bone-in stuff, because you don't want to be serving undercooked anything. Right, we are at 85. That means we're good. <laughs> I'll leave that to, to chill out for a minute. Move this out and allow this guy to thicken up. It's thickening up beautifully. We're going to finish it off with a little bit of Franks. And we're going to be plating up the last dish. <laughs> yes! <laughs> we made it. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit worried there for a second, but no need. Absolutely chilled. <laughs> cool. So that's, that's thickening up. Okay. So the sauce is beautiful. I'm going to finish that off with a little bit of Frank's here. Just going to zh 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 in. Really put a bit of it in. We like it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to taste it. Always taste the food and your sauces because... Otherwise, you might not be able to come back from it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're all about that. Yeah, it's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. Okay, so I'm going to take these out. I had some long... Oh, they're hiding under here. So we've got... Can you see the crust on that? Can you hear the crust on that? Yes. So I'm going to put that directly into there. So I've got my wings, and the sauce is beautiful and thick now. And I can just, all I'm going to do is put that over there, put the sauce and drizzle that. You'd be a bit messy. <laughs> it's fried chicken, you know? <laughs> But that sauce has got a really lovely balance of sweetness from the cola. It's got the gochujang. It's got the franks to give it a little bit of acidity and heat. And it's beautifully balanced. I'm just going to top that with a few spring uh, sesame seeds. Because we're in that world. And uh, yeah, that's going to give it a little pop of colour. So that is our last dish. And... I mean, I filled this bench, which I'm really happy about. 
Uh, there is a couple more questions. If you've got any more questions, please send them in now because, I mean, this isn't your last chance. If you have any questions following the live, following the webinar, you can always ping me a message on Instagram. Uh, my name's Chef Philly, so ping me a message. But get your questions in now. <laughs> um, do you think delivery will still be as big post-pandemic? Yes, 100%. I am very passionate about this, right? So delivery will be because I feel that the customer mindset has actually changed because of this hard, because of COVID, because of the pandemic, the, there has been a mindset change in customers where they're more attuned to delivery food and it actually went up. So the, like, for example, the delivery numbers were up like, 600 percent uh last year which is like mad um and i feel that because the customer mindset has changed we we will still keep keep on ordering delivered food and it's not only it's mainly the young generation millennials gen z that are ordering delivered food but not only there are there are more mature customers that are ordering delivered food as well and that everyone is is adopting this mindset and a lot of the delivery companies are actually moving to more not just london the big cities they're going to other areas within the country so yeah delivery delivery food is coming to cities within cool excellent so guys thank you so much for joining it was a pleasure to cook with you and i hope you all enjoyed and if you sorry <laughs> And if you want to catch up again, you can watch this at 4 p.m. where it will be rerun. And if you've got any questions for me, make sure you send them in. Uh, and I, that, thanks so much. See you later. Yay. <laughs>